Hi, my name is Dr. Tim Barker and I'm joined by Zach Munn, who is going to give us a bit of an introduction to predatory journals. Can you give us an introduction as to what predatory journals are? Okay, so predatory journals, uh, they're an increasing issue in evidence synthesis and science itself. Uh, the reason we're worried about predatory journals is because these are journals that have, uh, let's call, uh, they follow less than best practices. So this may be in the way they try to get people to submit to their journal, they might try to solicit people uh, through unwarranted uh, solicitation. They may be, uh, have dubious peer review policies and practices, uh, very dubious editorial standards as well. And the issue with predatory journals is that the quality of the research that gets published in these predatory journals, uh, that because of these dubious practices, um, there could be a lot of issues with fraud or error or, or issues with pseudoscience, etc., getting published and, and poor quality research or, or even fraudulent research getting published in these predatory journals, which, which try to come across as legitimate scientific and scholarly publications, but in fact they're doing a lot of harm to science. So we've discussed uh, why predatory journals are so dangerous to the evidence synthesis landscape, but how do primary authors and systematic review authors actually identify a predatory journal? This, this is a real, real problem. So obviously when we do systematic reviews we want to include the best available evidence and we want to include evidence that isn't fraudulent that, that, or isn't subject to error. And as systematic reviewers it would help if we, if we had some way to identify what journals are predatory in nature. Now, there was, once upon a time, there was a list called Beale's List by uh, Geoffrey Beale, who was, who was an information scientist. But uh, over the years, he actually started getting contacted by some of these predatory publishers uh, who said that he threatened him with um, legal action, defamation cases, and even personal threats as well. So he had to shut down the list. Um, and this just goes to show how, how some of these predator, predatory journals actually do act. Um, and behave. So now there, you can still refer to archive versions of that list and there are some successes of that list as well. There's also a really useful website um, which is called Think, Check, Submit and you can actually put the journal name in there to see if it comes up on the list of predatory journals. And how might the inclusion of a predatory journal or at least data from a predatory journal impact the conclusions drawn from a systematic review? Well. If this, this, this all comes down to whether or not the data is in the study is trustworthy or whether the authors have done something fraudulent or made huge errors uh, in the way they've actually um, conducted their study. So this is, this is very, very worrying for science right? and systematic reviews. It would mean we're concluding studies um, where the data is just not trustworthy in our, in our systematic review. So it's a huge issue in evidence synthesis, which is why we should be trying to uh, identify predatory journals, but also making sure if we, if we uh, are worried about articles that have been published in predatory journals that we're putting in place extra checks and balances um, because, because this is a huge concern. Okay. And before we close, I just want to ask, have you ever been contacted by a predatory journal? Uh, I'm probably being contacted by a predatory journal right now. <laughs> Literally, uh, I'm sure you're in the same boat. I am. It's, it seems like once you've uh, published in a reputable journal or in, in, a, in a proper periodical or peer-reviewed journal, your, your email address is out there and that makes you a target for these predatory publishers. So a lot of academics and researchers, uh, every morning when they open their email inbox, uh, 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 they're subject to a flurry of emails um, inviting you to submit to these prestigious journals and this, this is that um, this solicitation uh, that, I, that I mentioned earlier where you get emails to submit to these journals which are probably not in your field. Um, you can often pick them straight away because there's a lot of grammatical errors in the, in the journals, uh, in, in the email. And unfortunately, this is, this is a real issue uh, because you're probably in the same boat. Every day I have to spend 10, 15 minutes or whatever it may be just cleaning my inbox from all of these predatory journals predatory conferences as well, um, 
uh, and, and, that, and that's a waste of time. And if you think about how much time is wasted across a global community of researchers and academics who have to spend so much time just cleaning out their inbox because of these predatory journals, yeah, it's, such, it's such waste. It is really such waste. So these predatory journals, are, they, they really are a bad thing and they have really bad practices and, and we do need to stamp them out somehow. Uh, well, thank you very much uh, today, Zach, for the enlightening conversation. My pleasure.